I mean, the Asian session, when this news starts to come through, we usually look to dollar yen. The yen gets a bid, dollar yen rolls over. Looking at the story now, that is not the story in the FX market. The FX market and more broadly markets full stop continually shake off what's going on here. Why? Well, I, th I think geopolitical issues are always really tough for the FX market to digest. I think we get our knee-jerk responses, but unless there's a really you know, a sea change in terms of the valuation structure or market positioning or how it has a bigger, larger impact on risk aversion or market sentiment in general, it's really hard for the FX market to internalize geopolitical issues, especially because the outcome tends to be parabolic or tends to be nonlinear. So we tend to always shift back after a knee-jerk reaction to the, the themes we have at play, which is right now a mix of carry, momentum, and also a shift in valuation as central banks start to talk about normalization. Greg, the market just really doesn't care about this at the moment. What is the red line for financial markets and for investors? I think geopolitical risk, you know, as Mark mentioned, is really hard to guard against, right? Yeah. At the same time, though, you're really seeing escalation uh, in that risk at the same time that markets uh, are decidedly rich, that uh, central banks globally look like they're pulling back. So, uh, so you are setting up uh, for, you know, this, this, uh, this event potentially, but it's really hard to guard against. So, Mark, come back to you. Let's talk about the carry issue, because uh, what I hear you saying basically is unless the world totally falls apart, we're going to ignore all the geopolitics. Let's talk about where rates are, essentially, the difference between rates. Is that's what's driving the markets to a large degree right now? Yeah, I think it, the way you want to think about it is we've seen in the last couple of years cyclical highs in geopolitical indices to try to track a lot of the uncertainty around it. At the same time, we've seen risk appetite at cyclically elevated levels. So the issue you see is that the economic policy uncertainty indicators haven't been very good predictors of economic growth. At the same time, it seems to be risk appetite and volatility in markets more generally is much better at predicting where the economy is going to go, or at least better predicting of, of where markets should be over the next couple of months as opposed to geopolitical uncertainty. So the way the markets are really kind of focusing right now is you do have a lot of tail risk in the geopolitical environment, but unless it really shakes the economic outlook for a lot of these major economies, we're still in a reflationary environment. We're still seeing global growth uh, move uh, relatively ahead of, of cyclical levels we've seen over the past couple of years. And we're still in an environment where I think central banks are responding to an impulse where they want to start to reduce stimulus. So I think the focus for FX markets is, is carries a strong story because you still have so much more um, higher yields and more attractive valuations in emerging markets. But at the same time, the valuation is a lot of the G10 currencies like Euro, Yen, Stocky, those currencies are still extremely undervalued. So as their central banks start to talk about normalization, the FX market's trading on a mix of carry and value at the same time because we're not seeing a big impulse from uh, coming from the inflation side, which would derail the carry trade.